Kaiju, Dragon Ball, Pokemon, and more. It's Steven's Story Reviews. Hello there, collectors. It's Steven here, and welcome to another edition of... Figure Fight. That's right. This one, five years in the making, five years of bickering, five years later, just in time for the new Godzilla movie, King of the Monsters, it's time to put NECA's first Godzilla head-to-head -head with Bandai's first attempt at a new Godzilla design. In one corner, the freshman effort from the National Entertainment Collectible Association, the 12-inch head-to-tail Godzilla 2014. And from the land of the rising sun, the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2014. This is a battle for the ages as collectors are building their Monsterverse shells. So let's not delay and see who takes home the championship belt. Round one. Sculpt and paint. Here's where both contenders begin to warm up and throw some heated jabs, but Bandai's efforts will fall short. NECA had access to the actual model used in the film, and though some areas were indeed touched up by hand, the figure itself is basically what we saw on the screen in terms of sculpt. It automatically wins in terms of accuracy, but that is not exactly what the figure fight is about. Remember, there are rules here. The SH Monster Arts, however, was sculpted by hand by Yuji Sakai with reference to an older maquette design not used for the final design of Godzilla in the movie, which actually looks a bit similar to the 2019 design. Hmm, note the feet especially. So even though it's not accurate, it still looks intimidating and fantastic. Here's where things begin to fall apart. The SH Monster Arts suffered hard from quality control issues on the head with eyes not properly aligned, sloppy teeth paint, he has them painted on his jaw for f sake, come on, and a bloody snoot which some tried to dismiss as Muto blood, thank you, some popular reviewers who decided to just neglect that and spread misinformation, whereas the NECA's eyes are just a tad bit beady, and well, the teeth could be better but aren't nearly as bad as the Monster Arts. The SH Monster Arts also has questionable green used on the figure throughout, which makes it stand out, but not always in a good way, whereas the NECA utilizes a nice blue dry brush to enhance some of the details. Though note, some did slip by the factory in the process and didn't have it. Hmm. Yeah. At any rate, those still look good, coupled with a nice brown paint application on the chest and belly. Why didn't their 2019 look this nice? Huh. Anyway, where the SH Monster Arts decimates the NECA would be in the dorsal plate sculpt. They just look nasty, a rigid mountain range on his back, while the NECA lacks the finer details, almost looking rubbery and, to be blunt, cheap. The SH Monster Arts is also made out of a better quality plastic. For example, I couldn't accidentally rip the tip of my SH Monster Arts tail off. Oops. Regardless, the NECA looks great. Bandai's is okay. One straight jab to the jaw, and NECA gets the point for the round. Round two. Articulation. We'll start with the NECA. I'm just going to tell you about the joints and show you the range of movement here. We have a hinged jaw with limited ball joints in the neck at two spots. We have ball jointed shoulders that work really well, hinged elbows with swivels which plug into the bicep, and ball jointed wrists. Nice movement. Now it starts going south a little bit. We have ball jointed waist with rather hindered movement. You can move them sort of forward and back and twist and turn them and all that fun stuff. And we have abhorrent ball jointed hips. Those are just terrible. Yeah. Knees have swivels and hinges with basically non functioning ball joints for the ankles. You're not really going to get ankle rocker movement. You can just kind of turn them around. Tail features a few ball joints and a wire end portion of the tail, which you're going to have to attach when you open it up. Eventually, many of these will break over time from moving them and so forth. While everything moves well and not much really falls off, it's not really all that great a movement. Here's Bandai's turn. 
ball jointed jaw with a ball joint of the tongue pointless but cool and a ball joint system in the neck that's rather complicated so we're just going to go ahead and say a ball joint system sometimes mine likes to pop off but hey you know what it didn't happen here ball jointed shoulders with uh, we can just call them hinged elbows with ball joints where they plug into the bicep and the forearm ball jointed wrists are always nice we have an ab crunch in waist which are on ball joints as well allowing for fantastic movement allowing godzilla to look down but he can't really look up of course twist and turn from side to side and rock but there is a hidden dorsal plate for my gaps Hips are on a ball joint but are sculpted awkwardly, really preventing him from standing up straight and forcing him to almost always be in a sumo pose. Knees have a hinge and multi-ball joint system allowing for nice movement in the legs, but mine like to come apart sometimes. Yay! Ball jointed ankles. Tails got plenty of ball joints but they're all loose, can't hold a damn pose, and the tail loves to pop off the base. Sure, the SH Monster Art has plenty of joints and can strike a cool pose, but in reality, it's not all that functional, especially when the repaint that came out a year later fixes these issues. Tough spot here. The NECA is functional but limited, and the Bandai is very expressive but not very functional. Positive and negative equals a neutral on both parts. Both are standing after this round. It's a tie. Round three. Scale. Both of these figures are roughly the same size. The SH Monster Arts is a bit bigger depending on how it's posed. So if they're basically about the same size and they fit pretty much in any collection, whether it's going to be Movie Monster Series, SH Monster Arts, NECA, they're equal. Still unfazed this round as well. Whew. This fight is getting interesting. Round four. Price. MSRP on the NECA is tough to pinpoint since NECA really doesn't make MSRP available to consumers, just to retailers, but it had a range from $21.99 to $24.99, even on a reissue five years later. Whereas the SH Monster Arts had a US MSRP of $67.99, we're not talking about aftermarket, we're talking about MSRP. Though at the time of release, I got it new at a conversion rate at like $10 lower shipped. Yeah, currency can be funky. That's why we're going with what Bluefin set for an MSRP. Anyway, the NECA is cheaper and gets the point. Easy. Round five. There is no round five. I just wanted a, uh, a point of attention here to bring something up. There's normally supposed to be an accessory section, but neither of them come with one. But you. You know. You. The one who's going to be in the comments like, Oh, but Spitfire G14, he comes with an accessory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so that's a repaint of the Monster Arts Godzilla 2014, the Spitfire version. That comes with a beam, a support system for the beam, and a severed Muto head in Godzilla's hand. That's great. And while those are compatible with the one that you're seeing on the screen, the normal G14 doesn't come with anything. The Spitfire version is a different figure entirely and is meant to be a different rendition of Godzilla 2014 and meets different needs. It's not vanilla G14, it's him when he's supercharged up and firing off his beam. It's not a fair fight with the NECA since they haven't released anything similar, even though we know the Spitfire version whoops the vanilla G14 in every way. So what would that potential figure fight be? Hmm, I wonder. But to sum it up, there are no accessories here. Final Bell that's it, that's the fight. Here's the scorecard one more time for those who need a refresher. And wow, that was a bit of a close one. In the end, looks and price granted the NECA the victory. Articulation and sizing, they were mostly an even match. Of course, this is a tale of the tape here over on Figure Fight Videos, where we stack up their stats against each other to see which one comes out on top. And it's fine if you have a preference of one over the other. 
I actually prefer the SH Monster Arts in some ways more than the NECA, and if I were to make a default Monsterverse display, I'd probably put the Monster Arts in there. But of course, everyone has their different opinions, so let's hear your thoughts in the comments. Any foul calls, missed shots? Let the fans know in the comments down below. We always love hearing from you. And I'd also like to thank the patrons of STR this month for making sure videos like this can happen. Support from you guys makes it worth it even more when we work towards these videos. So please consider helping out the channel. And thanks again so much to those already doing so. Big shout outs to you folks. And now we're going to have the end card up on the screen where you'll get some short URLs and a couple of things to click on. Other videos, Teespring Store, The Works. Thanks again for everyone for coming out to this figure fight. Don't forget to subscribe. Go see King of the Monsters in theaters, and I'll catch you in the next video.